This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog. Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog is Baton Rouge's longest running and best television show. Who would have believed that? Sports 225 is brought to you by Brett. Remember, it all starts at Brett. Now, your host, Lee finds one. That's my job of music. Oh, you know how lucky I am because you saw, I got Skip Bertman here, the former legendary LSU baseball coach and athletic director at LSU and uh, on the week of his 80th birthday. That's right. Well, you know, thoughts about that? You, you know, deep, profound thoughts or just well, simply? Well, a profound you know. thought about turning 80. Somebody told me the big advantage, you can't die young. <laughs> 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 but other than that, it's a lot of creaks and aches and pains. and Do the best I can, you know, to make it, uh, you know. My wife and I are both in the same boat, you know. We're old. <laughs> You're old. You retired from coaching at, I, I, I want to say, young 60s. Uh, I know it's about the mid-60s. Yeah. It was 2001. Okay. And uh, they needed uh, an athletic director. In other words, oh, the, yeah. the search for the athletic director that they had uh, didn't pan out, you know, for either of the last two guys. You know, they withdrew type thing. And uh, the chancellor didn't want to go out again. That looks pretty bad. So he said, how about you be the AD, you know. Right. I was going to go uh, on a speaking tour, you know, professional speaking tour. Dale Brown, a uh, good man. Boy, he had blazed a trail for that. Yeah. For the Washington Speakers Bureau. And, uh, of course, he did uh, an incredible amount, but, but I would have done, he had already retired, and, and I would have done, uh, you know, weeklies, and, uh, you know, I thought it was a good deal, and I just didn't want to, uh, you know, I wanted to see what that was like. But, however, uh, I knew, oh, this is terrible, but, but I knew what to do. Um, you know, if I was the athletic director, you know, well, of course. I, I had been yeah. to other schools and I, a lot of athletic directors. Well, gone I ask you from the sense, too, that uh, at the time, you know, you, you, you've battled your share of health issues as anybody does sure. get into their 60s, 70s and long into your 80s, as you will, you know. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, so you made that transition. But uh, um, that, that might have been a good thing, you know, from that end. So... Anyway, so when I had a million years ago on the old Sports Monday, when we got to the 500 shows, which is God knows how long, you know, this was Sports Monday, became Sports 225, did about 600 of those um, Sports Mondays, and this is show 237 of Sports 225. So wow. I'm, you know, I'm pushing in on 1,000 here in a couple of years. Ooh, talk about old. Well, got anyway, a so, record there. God, so anyway, I archived highlights from every single one of the first 500 oh, shows. Oh, oh. So there was a Sports Monday that reveals two things, and it's from 12 years ago. Now, how do I know it's from 12 years ago? Well, you'll see in a second. The other is, is I've often wondered the last couple of years what my face used to look like because <laughs> I, I haven't shaved the mustache haven't. since since I don't think that time 12 years ago when I know the beard comes on and off, you know, but every time I just have a mustache, people give me crap. Anyway, <laughs> so I've been thinking about it. Anyhow, 12 years ago, you were the guest, and age came up, so... Check this out. <laughs> but there's always some who don't. Uh, well, well, you know, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who send you emails. You know, that it's about them. You know, in other words, <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I think the email that I, that gives me the greatest kick is the one the guy says, "Skip, I'm 62 years old. I can't get up to the top of the stadium anymore. I need to move down." And of course, as if 62, you know, I wouldn't relate to that, you know, being, you know, 68. <laughs> but they, uh, as yeah, but somebody's sitting there, you see, and they can't move. I think the most common request is that one. I think, I think I never thought I'd see myself uh, sprinkling Uncle Harry's ashes on the 50. 
of Tiger Stadium. I think that's a request I wasn't ready for. Um, uh, I think that uh, I understand where the band's too loud or you can't hear the band or the coffee's too hot or the line's too long. And, I, and, and the difference is, is we respond to all of them. And uh, we think everybody's important. Uh, you know, we think without the fans, we're nothing. You know, but it isn't for the fans. There's no tax dollars, no student fees. And it's the only school like that. All the other schools, they might not use tax dollars, but they do have a lot of fees involved. And that includes Florida, Georgia, and Auburn, and the others. Um, so, you know, we need, the stu we need the fans to support us in, in all sports, in basketball, baseball, and football especially. Well, you brought up a lot of interesting things in that answer right there. I mean, the, no, number one is that you're 68. Yeah, it's kind of. And it, now look, you don't look that much different. My hair was so much darker than what was on my head, but of course, you know, it was. It's weird for me to see my face. But you can still play water polo with the best of them, and I admire that. That's only, only with the best of them my age. <laughs> best of them your age, of course. Um, yeah. So you know, the whole first segment here. I mean, you know, I've, I, I, it's made thinking about it because of you know your birthday coming up being eighty. So in that in that clip, I would have been 51, you know, you were 68, right. and uh, it just gives you reason to pause, and I don't it know does. if you've had any of those kind of I weird thoughts it. this week. Thank you, know. you. Yeah. Well, he's Skip Bartman. Uh, when we get back, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about stuff, because we always do. Maybe I'll get him to tell a Mississippi State joke, you know, who knows. Um, <laughs> he's the former legendary LSU baseball coach, uh, the athletic director who catapulted LSU into the greatest period it ever had and will never equal again. I'm Lee Feinswag with Sports 225. Hi, I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the guy who enforces rules at Breck Parks. Check out my amazing presentation. Did you know? Motorized vehicles are not allowed in Breck Parks. Sales and solicitation are prohibited without permission from Breck. And my favorite rule, Keep Breck Parks clean by placing all trash in trash cans. Come on, you can do this. For more information about these and other Breck rules, please visit breck.org slash HDB. All right, we're back on Sports 225, hanging out with the legendary Skip Bertman, whose real name is Stanley. Did you ever go by Stanley? Not really, ever. Not Even really. from a little kid. Grew up in Miami Beach. Right. Um, you know, we, we've known each other. He got here uh, the year not even a year before I did, and, uh, and I moved That's here right. in December of 84. And, uh, of course, saw him as the assistant coach at Miami for a long time. And uh, you still go to LSU baseball and follow it closely oh, and keep up with it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm there almost every game. Uh, a lot of games I go real early, and I go in a dugout, and I congratulate those guys that did real well the week before. You know, or... Uh, well, let me ask you this. How many games do you stay till the end? <laughs> not, not, not that many because I have, uh, you know, Netflix, of course, and they're all on television, every game, not every SEC game. Right. So I, I watch Mike Bianco, my old uh, Well, that's what coach. I wanted to ask you about when you say go to games. So, uh, you know, you went up to Ole Miss. Your uh, former Mike player, Mike that. Bianco, had Richard you up Lipsy. there. Richard Lipsey. Yeah. Uh, my really close friend, he, he, he uh, flew me, See, uh, not knowing that this was happening, he flew me up there. Ooh. Now, of course, that's expensive, but he, you get to 40 minutes, you know. And I uh, go to the game, and, and there's like 12,000 people at the game. It's going to be the largest crowd they ever had. Uh, at Old Miss. Uh, Mike, had, of course, had given us a tour of the things that's going to happen at Old Miss and his uh, bells and whistles for recruits, uh, you know, under the stadium. And, of course, the stadium's beautiful, and he's done a wonderful job. It's not the same stadium that I played in against Mississippi and Don Kessinger. Uh, and Kessinger's grandson is, is the uh, shortstop. Mike's uh, one of the best. Uh, he gets on all of a sudden, boom, he pops up on the screen. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real honor for me. You know, please get up and welcome my, uh, my mentor, you know, my coach, Skip Bertman, you know, and of course 12,000 people. See, I didn't know that was coming. Oh, that's good. And Richard did and his wife, but you know, they never said anything. And we had a real good old time. We saw two ball games, and uh, 
Uh, Mike has some really good players. And on the other hand, Paul showed at that week what he showed this past weekend. Uh, he can bring them back. Paul Maneri. If you get beat on Friday, that doesn't mean anything. He's still tough on Saturday. Then when all his pitching's used up and you don't know who's pitching, another pitcher pitches and he does a good job. Paul is a, does a good job of fighting and competing every out, which really is a secret. They have the number of outs, not like any other sport. And he gets the 27 outs. You know, he's, this pitcher, I need three from you. I need two from you. I need, and he does a great job. And of course, the kids hit. A uh, wonderful bunch of kids. Uh, he's done a good job at 12 and 12. It's coming this weekend with Alabama. It's likely that he'll get into the playoffs, which is a wonderful thing for having the injuries oof, and the problems that he's had this year. Um, you brought up an interesting thing about pitchers, and it's this, the specialization. Like I had Will Harris on earlier this year, pitch for the Astros. You know, and his job was to come in as like uh, the setup to the setup. Oh, what you know, a break. Yeah. when you when you were a, a, a young guy. <laughs> Certainly not in high school, but maybe at uh, yeah, Miami and then early high. here. Yeah. You, you know, pitchers, you had them go. They, they'd go seven, eight, nine innings right, if you needed no, them no, to. We, they how, did, of, how often did you use even more than one relief pitcher right. unless the guy was struggling? Now, right. This they, is back they, then. The game has changed. Right. And uh, when I leave here, I'll get back to my book, The Art of Baseball, the Baseball Smarts. And it's by... Um, one of the uh, ESPN nerdy guys that never played but keeps every stat. Mm -hmm. And how the game has changed. So, yeah. You know, in other words, used to be you tried to go nine. Didn't you uh, like that, though, in a pitcher? Yeah, well, I did. You know, I grew up that way. And, it, and you went eight, and some guy came in for one. Right. Now the guy goes six. And they bring in three different, you know, relief pitchers, seven, eight, and nine. Even five. Yeah. And they'll bring in four pitchers. Now, Paul does that, and uh, big leaguers do that. The, the, it's just tough to pitch. It, it, it's imp that five pitchers, even with five days rest, which they have now. They used to have four days. Right. Uh, even with five days rest, they can't seem to use... Uh, 150 pitchers, you know, like five per team. Wait, you remember? They the used old, 20 a team. Yeah, in the old days in major leagues, you had four starters, yeah, a they, fifth guy because they used to play double headers on Sundays. Yeah. You know, or there'd be an and extra you, uh, game the in. The extra rainout guy. Right, right. So there'd be five starters. You'd have one closer, you know, yeah. maybe two. Well, and then three or four other guys who, if we need you, if anybody gets hurt, or maybe you'll get in the game. Right. Now, I'm not, not I love Will Harris. He right. really helped us out uh, last week. We had a lot of guys uh, go to the, one of the Astro games. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, <laughs> he, he's great. But the, that job that Mark Guthrie had and Russ Springer. Ooh, old names. Who played for 18 years. Yeah. Russ. And, of course, Guthrie was 14 years. And, you know, that means you, Guthrie's case, you come in to face a left-handed batter. Now, you hold the runner, Guthrie, because that's one of his jobs, and then you get this guy out, and then they take you out because the righty's up. But if you don't get him out, they still take you out <laughs> and, and the other guy. So you pitch about 70 times a year, maybe 70 to 80 doing that. Yeah. But you're only going to get one batter. <laughs> And I don't know. That's that's a job. That's a lot of money for yeah. one guy, huh? And, and yeah. they make big money, and they can last a long time doing that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hold that thought. That was great. He's Skip Bertman. I'm Lee Feinsfog. We got to take this break. Uh, we'll be back on Sports 225. Hi, I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the rules guy for Breck Parks. Sometimes the rules slip past us. So I put together this amazing presentation. Did you know? Golf practice is only allowed at designated golf facilities. Firearms, explosives, and weapons are not allowed on Breck property. Metal detecting is allowed in some parks, but go to Breck's website to learn more about this and other park rules. For more information, visit breck.org slash HDB. We're, we're back. I'm Lee Feinsfog. It's Sports 225. I'm hanging out with Skip Bertman, who had a legendary 
baseball coaching career at LSU, five College World Series titles, then became the athletic director, made some great hires, brought LSU into what I have referred to as, you know, people say these were the good old days, those were the good old days, because there was a stretch there at the end yes. of your athletic director tenure and then into the time after you retired that, that you know you, that's residual from you that you put LSU into a well, time that can never be replicated. Well, thank you. I don't think it'll be replicated. Uh, for instance, uh, 1958, they won the national championship, and right. that was it. And then, of course, uh, Nick Saban, who you know had to leave. You know, we begged him, you know, but we couldn't compete with a gazillionaire. You know, like. Uh, Wayne you know, Heisinger, right? Like yeah. Wayne Heisinger. Is that, who, is that who was who owned the office? Yeah, Heisinger. Yeah, okay. And, and the more I pushed, the more he wanted him. Right. And the more Nick didn't really want to go, and the more he asked, the more he gave him. Okay. Uh, but then Nick won, and then three years later, we won another one. Yeah. And we've been there and didn't win in another one, yeah. which never happened before. And, and don't forget, at the same time, your women's basketball women's team was basketball going to Final Fours. Huge. The baseball team Five was at a times pinnacle. Final four. Yeah. And even the men yeah. one, one time Final Four. Yeah. Since 1953, they've never been there. So when I, I think of the hold most- on, Hold on, hold on, 1986 with Dale Brown, 2006 with uh, John Brady. That was, in, no, they lost an eight. Right. In there. You remember uh, Rick, uh, Oh, Ben McDonald's reached up, and that kid that was from Baton Rouge that ultimately went to, of course, to Indiana, shot Keith you know, Smart. Keith Smart, yeah, good man, yeah, just over his finger, and uh, that was a winning uh, basket. We did real, Dale did real well. That was the 16, and um, so it, it's hard. I mean, to do these things, you know, to get to the World Series, four football teams, four basketball. Come on, it's really hard. But the one thing that that we had that makes me, me the proudest. Nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, we had 20 sports. Now there's 21. Uh, we had 20 sports. All 20 went to the NC2A playoffs. Now that's uh, mattered. I mean, it was some was volleyball that mattered to me, see, mm -hmm. and soccer mattered to me, you know, and golf and tennis and swimming and and of course gymnastics has continued its rise uh, with Dee Dee the greatest and uh, I, I was proud of that. So I retired and I still was going to do the speaking, and I did and I do and I consulting. And I'm slowing down a little now. And my birthday has been kind enough, the Tiger Athletic Foundation, do Thursday night, Skip Berkman, birthday night. Invited all baseball players that ever played. That's a lot of players. Yeah. At LSU. So there might be several hundred uh, people. Ron Polk is coming. He's my good friend for 40 years. He's changing his plans and he's coming in to roast right, so me. Stop you there. So Ron Polk, of course, the longtime coach at Mississippi State. Rival, and you just, friendly rival. You just used to love to gig him. <laughs> All right, so give me a, give me a, you know. You, there, could have, you, you said, your, you told me your favorite one was a tornado. Mm -hmm. uh, was coming and we all ran into the Coliseum. The tornado didn't go through the baseball area. It went through downtown Starkville and it left two and a half million dollars worth of improvements. <laughs> That's if your only favorite. we had the drums, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my favorite one. <laughs> Is, is at home at the dinner table, this bad father let his 16-year-old daughter smoke right at the dinner table in front of her children. I mean, that, that's awful. <laughs> oh, no. That's so bad. That's so oh, I bad. I shouldn't do that one. That one's too tough. It's too <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. And you used to make fun of Polk with the steel sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you what, though. He, yeah, that's right. right. He had a steel signal. Uh, hurry up. But I'll tell you what. He, he, uh, he was one of the greatest. He yep. did a lot for uh, the yeah. SEC, won a lot of baseball games. He's, a vol uh, he's the volunteer coach for one of his former players at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Oh, UAB. Which he doesn't have to show up every single game. Birmingham's close to Starkville where he has a large mm -hmm. house. 
and uh, so he travels back and forth. He still does a lot of baseball clinics. He does, you know, he's, he's done a lot for baseball. He's a good man. Let me get you out of here on a tough one, though, to end this segment. But, you know, if, you know a couple of months ago, you, you know, Ronnie Ranson then put together a great deal, a dinner, and it was a hangout with you and Augie Garrido, the former yeah. Texas coach, the Fullerton yeah, coach. What tough. an unbelievable legend. And that was, uh, I you know. I spent, uh, Augie Garrido, the coach at the, well, the former coach at the University of Texas, but the winningest coach in the history of college baseball until two days ago when Mike Martin. Oh, at Florida uh, State? Na yeah, now yeah. Mike Martin is the winningest coach. Well, Augie's the greatest, and uh, I played against him, talked for many times, uh, and knew him from California days and watched him grow, and uh, not a lot of people realize, but he tested himself. He went and coached at Illinois. Yep for three years. See, I, I admire that. Now, Illinois did very well, much better, but you know, it, was too, it was too cold. And they don't have the good athletes to start to recruit. So anyway, Augie uh, threw out a pitch with me, and we were seriously uh, 10 feet away. <laughs> Augie, same age as I am. Yeah. Okay, and we oofed the ball in. <laughs> And we laughed, and we had a great time. We went to New Orleans. His good friend, Kevin Cosner, came off a movie set in New Orleans to talk to his buddy Augie, not wow, me, wow. his buddy Augie. We had a wonderful time. Everybody was involved. Augie was so good. He's funny. Yeah. And, and he was so good in, in, in strange territory. He was terrific. And he goes home, and, uh, you know, I get a call, and uh, he had a stroke playing golf and uh, they, as doctors have told me, you know, they put you in a coma, induced coma, so the brain will reduce, but it didn't. Mm. And uh, his wife had to, you know, make a decision. And, uh, you know, God bless Augie. Uh, he was one of the greatest that ever coached. Yeah, no well, I'm so glad it. you guys got to have that time together. And that we was... had some time. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, well, I hate to end on that one, but we'll finish up in the short segment. We'll laugh again. All right. All right, he's Skip Hartman. I'm Lee Feinfog with Sports 225. <laughs> well, well. It looks like someone forgot all neighborhood break parks close at dark. Y'all want another? I think they'll pass. Amplified music and sound is prohibited without permission from Breck. No alcoholic beverages on Breck property. Smoking of tobacco products is not allowed. Dislike. Use of fire is prohibited except in grills. Woo. Gotta remember, Breck wants you to have fun, but in the right way. For more info, go to breck.org slash HDB. We're back on Sports 225 and coming down the home stretch. And uh, we've got a whole new schedule here on uh, Your View. We're still uh, Friday, Friday, blah, 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 Friday mornings and Tuesday mornings on CST. But I'd be lying to you if I said I could recite it all. Go to sports225.com and check it all out. Uh, we got only about a minute left. Um, you, you still enjoy life, enjoy baseball, enjoy coming on and visiting with the media. I you do. enjoy turning 80. It's all good, right? I do. I'll uh, go to football games and I want to get with the media. Oh, you come in the press box and hold yeah, court. People box love it. And enjoy. The media are the most knowledgeable people. And uh, I enjoy them. They've really grown. You know, I've watched a lot of them grow and uh, into really super journalists and sports journalists. And, um, and, and then, of course, there's some that are still there, you know, and yeah. my God, you know. Uh, I, I really enjoy that. So, I, I, you know, I do a little football. I do all baseball, a little bit of basketball and a lot of softball. Uh, TV is there, you know, and you're able to watch them on TV very often. I'm uh, real excited about the new basketball coach, and I think it'll be good. Well, Bob Broadhead did an amazing thing 35 years ago, and he went to Miami, got the assistant coach to come take over the LSU baseball program. Changed way more than just baseball. Happy 80th birthday, sir, and thanks Thank for coming on. Thank you very on. much. All right, Skip Bertman. Um, I'm Lee Feinsfog. This has been another Sports 225. Good night. At Carnival Time by Baton Rouge Bay, that's the site of my story. At Spanish Town Mardi Gras, 